this is one of the oldest cameras on the planet, and yep, that's the actual photo it spit out. To kick things off, he mentally time travels a few centuries and zooms in on this shiny plate. That's the battlefield where the image is going to form, the place where light and chemistry throw hands. Light isn't just pretty, it starts reactions. The more light that slams into that plate, the stronger the reaction, and little by little an image crawls out of the darkness. Which means he needs to control the light like a strict bouncer at the door. No ticket. No entry. So he builds a starter shutter. Nothing fancy, just a neat little open-slash-close gizmo that says when photons can party and when they can get lost. Then he bolts the whole thing to a box, and slides that box into another freaking box. Box inside a box, because that's how you keep rogue sunlight from trashing the shot. Side sealed tight, no leaks, no maybes. Now the only place light can sneak in is the front. But to see what the camera's doing, and to actually nail focus, he grabs a glass plate and sands it with silicon carbide until it turns nicely frosted. Frosted glass is the secret sauce. Instead of light blasting straight through, it scatters on those microscopic scratches, bounces around like a pinball, and, bam, you get a faint, ghostly preview. From there, he can frame the scene like a pro and line up the shot. Give it a second, let the chemistry cook, and watch the image start to whisper its way onto that plate. He grabs a wooden board and drills the tiniest hole in it, so small you'd almost miss it. Then he sets it up in a spot drenched with light, ideally under the blazing sun. On the other side, he places a piece of frosted glass, sometimes covered with a dark cloth to make it easier to see. And there it is, a weak, upside-down image. Why inverted? Because light travels in straight lines. The top of the glass is hit by rays coming from the bottom of the scene, while the bottom of the glass gets rays from the top. The image looks faint, though, because that tiny hole only lets in a trickle of light. Make the hole bigger and, boom, you lose the sharpness completely. No crisp picture, just a blur. To fix that, he reaches for a converging lens. Without the lens, light from, say, the top of the object would scatter across the entire glass once the hole widened, top, middle, bottom, making everything fuzzy. But with the lens mounted inside a PVC tube, something magical happens. The light rays bend, line up correctly, and form a much brighter image. Still upside down, but now sharp, focused, and alive with detail.